thanks, and thanks for the invitation. So I want to talk about uh, ongoing joint work with Brian Williams on uh, current sigma models and their interpretation in terms of representations of Carl Lee algebraids. So I'm going to begin with um, listing some of the main players in this talk. Uh, I will not say much about them um, at first. This is just going to be an introduction, and then I will say a few more precise things. OK, so the first main player is the, the chern simons theory. So you start with the Lie algebra. Let's say it's a simple Lie algebra. And you have a level, which is an integer. And then a chern simons theory associated to this data Uh, it's a certain 3D topological field theory. And the category it attaches to the circle is the category representations of the loop group. So it's a, it's a ribbon category. So the category representations of the loop group at level k. Yes. So this is not just ribbon. This is even modular. But uh, it's not going to be important in this talk. You, you can also present this as modules over the quantum group with a root of unity, if you like. OK, so, so the next, uh, the, the next uh, player is going to be the chiral WZW model. So it's going to be uh, a, th a chiral theory. On the boundary. of chern simons theory. So we'll uh, try to formalize this notion of a chiral theory living on a boundary of a topological field theory later. But that's roughly how you're supposed to think about this. And uh, let me just say a few things about uh, why you can think about this as a chiral theory li living on a boundary. So for instance, you can look at chern simons theory uh, on some topological surface, sigma. So sigma is some topological surface. Uh, let's say a closed topological surface. And this is some Hermitian vector space. And what Carl WZW gives you uh, is a functional on this space. So Carl WZW gives you a functional. And this functional, so well, it depends on the, on, the, on the surface. It also depends on the complex structure on the surface, while the space doesn't depend on the complex structure. And using this functional, you can, uh, you can just compute its norm. And this gives you the full WZW model. So the partition function of uh, the full WZW model, not just Carl, on sigma, is the norm squared of this functional. So this is partition function. of the full WZW model. And this relation is known as holomorphic factorization of the full WZW model.
Okay. All right, so, so here are a few more players uh, that's gonna be important in the talk. Um, I'll also talk about certain um, two-dimensional CFT, uh, which is slightly different from chiral WCW. Uh, there's a curved beta gamma system. <coughs> target x, so it's some complex manifold. If you don't know what curved beta gamma system is, uh, you can think about this as a holomorphic twist of um, 0, 0,2 sigma model, uh, 2D 0, 0,2 sigma model with target x. So it's a certain uh, two-dimensional CFT. And its vertex algebra is known as the vertex algebra of chiral differential operators on x. X is any dimension. So uh, I said that there's a vertex algebra which, which is given by chiral differential operators. Um, th this is not quite a precise statement. Uh, here you need some extra data. And let me explain what this extra data is. So this theory exhibits an anomaly. At one loop. And to actually define the corresponding quantum, um, quantum theory, you need a trivialization of this anomaly. The anomaly is given by the second Chern character, which is some characteristic class living in the second cohomology of x with coefficients in closed two forms. And given the trivialization of the second Chern character, you get um, a certain vertex algebra associated to x. How do you mean trivialization? You mean a one form? Yeah, so, so you, you th think about this in, um, so for instance, in, in the Del Del model uh, of differential forms. So given a primitive f for this uh, in the Del Del model, you get a certain vertex algebra. And th this vertex algebra will depend on which primitive you've chosen. OK, and the final. Um, the final player will be um, what's known as chiral Durham complex. So holomorphic twist. Of uh, 2D 2, 2 sigma model. With target x gives another 2D CFT. Uh, in this case, there, 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 there are no anomalies. And the vertex algebra is known as the chiral Durham complex of x. So the vertex algebra is the algebra of observables in this holomorphic theory.
Okay, so uh, what I've written is uh, three 2D CFTs, Carter Law with W, uh, the theory of CDOs, and the theory of CDR. Two of them, uh, this current beta gamma system and uh, this holomorphic twist of 2 common 2 sig model, they are what's known as holomorphic CFTs. So you can think about them as being on the boundary of some invertible 3D TFT. While Cairo WZW is on the boundary of some non invertible Chern Simons 3D TFT. W lives on the boundary of non invertible 3D TFT, which is the Chern-Simons theory. Okay, and the goal of this talk will be to explain some generalization. Uh, which is called the Kuransig model. So it's going to be a 3D TFT. And uh, I, what I will explain is that assuming certain anomaly cancellation, this Kuransig model has uh, two classes of chiral boundary conditions. In one case, uh, when this Quran cycle model becomes invertible, those two chiral boundary conditions correspond to Carl, the chiral Durham complex and chiral differential operators. And uh, in the case when the Quran cycle model is the, is the Church Simons theory, one of those boundary conditions will be Carl Double's W theory. Okay. All right, so this is uh, just an introduction. Uh, let me spend some time explaining the the framework, how one can think about uh, Carl CFTs living on a boundary of a 3D TFT. Okay. So, um, by the Rishitik and Trive construction, uh, one to three TFTs. So three-dimensional topological field theories which extend down to one manifold, so to the circle, are determined by their values on the circle, which is going to be a ribbon category satisfying some fineness conditions. So given the ribbon category satisfying some pointing conditions, I can construct a one, two, three TFT. That, that, that determination is uh, Shevard Pries and... Uh, yeah, so, so I, I actually... Uh, um, so the full statement is due to... Let's see if I can remember... Uh, uh, Bartlett... Uh, Douglas Schumer Priest Vickery. Okay, uh, but in this talk, I'm going to concentrate on Carl CFTs. <laughs> so I want to replace uh, Rubin categories by their complex analogs. Uh, 
uh, by what's known as uh, chiral categories or factorization categories. So I'll say in a moment what this is. And another name for this is factorization category. Yes. Yes. So uh, th that kind of anomaly is trivial. Yeah. It's, it's it's important, but uh, yeah. It gives an extra layer of structure that I don't want to discuss. Um, okay. All right. So, um, so let, let me explain what these chiral categories are or factorization categories. But you should think of them as being holomorphic versions or algebraic versions of Rubin categories. Okay. So let's see. Let's say uh, C is some complex curve. Uh, then a chiral category on C, and I will just give um, an explanation of what chiral category is. I will not give a precise definition because it's um, it's long. Let's call it factorization category. So it's a collection of categories. Uh, it's going to be C parameterized by points uh, x1 through xn on this curve. Equipped with some extra structure. And I will just indicate the kind of structure you have without writing the full definition. Isomorphism with the coulences of categories. I'll just say such as, meaning that you have some kind of equivalences, and this is a representative example. So if you have a category associated to a pair of points and the points are the same, then you want to identify this. Uh, with a category for a single point. And then if you have a category that's associated to two points, and the two points are distinct, then you want to identify it with the tensor product of the corresponding categories. So we've seen uh, this definition in Emily's talk when she talked about factorization algebras. It was the same kind of co collection, but, but not of categories, but of vector spaces. Um, so you should think about this as roughly being analog of the tensor product. And then um, there's an extra structure, which is the unit. And again, I'll just write a representative example of, of this unit functor. So the categories, uh, this, this collection of categories um, where you plug in just the empty collection of points, you require this to be just a category of vector spaces. And you have a functor into C of x for any point x. And correspondingly, you can just increase the number of points and you have functors 
from C of any collection into C of any collection disjoint union and anything else. And this is analog of the unit. OK. Yeah. So let me uh, write two examples. One of them uh, is silly. One of them will be important uh, for the talk. So the first example is the trivial factorization category. And this is just the category which to every point as associates vect. So this is the category where all, the, all this data is just equivalence, um, tautological isomorphisms everywhere. But, but Pablo, when, when the two points get closer and collide, you're going to use the actual tensor product of the to... Yeah, but uh, f f when I, I'm a little bit lax in which category I'm uh, writing the tensor product, I'm thinking about tensor product of presentable k-linear categories where vect is a unit. So th this tensor product is just, again, vect. More generally, you can look at uh, any symmetric monoidal category, and this will give rise to a factorization category. So in this case, uh, Cx is vect. So you're going to take any, uh, any symmetric monoidal category um, let's call it A. Uh, it gives rise to a factorization category. with Cx being equivalent to A. And for a precise construction, I'll just refer to Sam Raskin's paper. Uh, but another important example is uh, representations with loop group. Question. Yeah. Is this the same as what people call a chiral category? Or, or yeah, so chiral factorization is the same. Uh, the only thing is maybe I want to add unital. So sometimes people consider this data without the unit, um, sometimes with the unit. So th this really references the whole morphic structure on the curve? Yes. Yeah, so, so I, 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 wasn't per I, I didn't put this in. Um, Th this collection of categories uh, should form, it should have a flat connection along the curve. So when you vary the, the points. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah so, so it's the end of the day, complex structure. Yeah, yeah up, to, up to some kind of Riemann Hilbert, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's actually flat. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and the second example is. Uh, is the following. So if I take a point on a curve, I can look at the punctured disk around this point. Around X. And then I can look at the factorization category, which to a point X, uh, associates representations of the loop group at x. Is it really necessary that you fix level k here? Uh, you can take k to be 0, for instance. Or, or, or what? Or can you just not have a level restriction at all? I mean, take the entire category of the representations of the loop group. No. Well, uh, so, so if, if you don't put the level, that means at level zero. Uh, but the level means you put the central extension, and then you fix the level. OK, so, so I'll give one more example uh, when I talk about CDOs and CDR. Uh, but these two are important examples.
OK, so another um, thing that I'll need is a notion of a lax factorization function and a factorization algebra. So you can imagine what this uh, notion is. So given two factorization categories on the same curve, So one can talk about lux factorization functions uh, from C to D. Well, as you can imagine, this just means that for any collection of points, you have functors. Which will lax commute with uh, the data. So there's a natural, a natural transformation between the corresponding diagrams for C and for D. OK, and uh, a factorization algebra in C, by definition, so if, if C is a factorization category, In C, this is the same as a lox factorization functor from Vect into C. So if, you've, if you don't like factorization categories or factorization algebras, uh, think about E2 categories or braid monoidal categories, then uh, a, a braided commutative algebra in a braided monoidal category is the same as a lax braid monoidal function from Vect into that category. OK. So for the next five minutes, you can just think about braid monoidal categories when I say factorization categories. OK, and uh, the, ex the example that's going to be important is the unit. Um, so if C is a factorization category, the unit determines uh, the unit factorization algebra. OK, so this is all I want to say about factorization categories. This is a very quick um, overview what they're, they're like, but again, think about either monoidal categories or braided monoidal categories. Yeah, one question, Paolo. Yeah. So your example about cement monoidal categories, Yeah. suppose we, I'm not sure of this, but can I take like the curve just C, for example? Mm -hmm. What is the least you need to assume about the category in order to construct one of these kind of trivial uh, ones? So I believe for C, it's enough to have a braided monoidal category, and for an arbitrary curve, it's enough to have a ribbon category. But this construction has been written down. All, this has been written down only for symmetric monoidal categories. Probably you need like balance. balance. Yeah, that's what I meant by ribbon. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It, you, you can yeah. Instead of ribbon, you can just say balanced. Yeah, of course. Okay. So now, given this definition of factorization category and factorization algebra, uh, I can define a notion of a three D TFT having a chiral boundary condition. OK, so, um, so I'm going to encode into a factorization category C. So again, if you think about factorization category as being analogous to a ribbon category, a 3D TFT, uh, at least which, is, which extends down to circle, uh, is determined by a ribbon category. And then one encodes chiral boundary conditions and 
and I'll give some examples uh, to this in a second. Um, when it calls them in terms of locks factorization functors, from C into VECT. So for me, the data uh, of a 3D TFT will be a factorization category, and the data of Carl boundary condition will be a locks factorization function from C into VECT. So out of, uh, g given such, such a pair, well, in C you have a canonical <coughs> unit factorization algebra, and since this is locks factorization, you can it take its image in VECT. Then you get a factorization algebra in VECT. And so this is just plain factorization algebra. This is the factorization algebra describing observables in this Carl theory. A any curve. This is factorization category on given curve, but now we say any curve. Yes, so it's. The polymorphic structure plays no role here. So it plays no role. Yeah, so, so, the, the, there, um, so let me just finish this sentence and then I'll, I'll say a, sec, uh, a word about um, homework structure. Is by the way, your functors are all right at right adjoints, is that right? Uh, you're asking if these functors are right adjoints to something. Mm, not usually, no. So Pablo, for interpretation, should I think about this as some sort of categorified version of the ma map you gave before between Schoenstein? Yeah, e exactly. So, so th this is the data you, you, you get on a circle. Um, on, on the circle, you get a category and a lock factorization functor. If you go to a Riemann surface, there you have a vector space and a functional. So this is the same kind of data on the circle. In, in f for the full picture, you're supposed to couple the, the two. You have something on the, on the circle. You have something for punctured Riemann surfaces. Uh, but I will not define this in a talk. OK, so, so, so a word about uh, holomorphic structures. So one usually adds extra data. Which is. The fact that it carries uh, an action of automorphisms of the puncture disk. So just all um, all definitions are invariant under changes of coordinates. But what happens in the topological field theory is that uh, this extra data is actually better than just an action of automorphisms. it has an action of the homotopy type of the automorphism group. So this enhancement from the action of automorphisms to the action of the homotopy type is given by the Sugawara construction uh, in the case of uh, representation of the loop group. And uh, what, what happens on, for this factorization function is that it's equ equivalent to respect to changes of coordinates, but it's not equivalent to respect to the full homotopy type. So the Sakawara construction acts non-trivially on the representation. Um, but when you change uh, coordinates, of course, the representation doesn't change when you change coordinates of LG. So the, yeah. Do I understand correctly if I say that when <coughs> factors, you'd not just ask them to be compatible with the, the flat connection? Yeah, so, so th this is the flat, con flat connection. Um, again, maybe it, it's, it's more familiar what, what happens on the surface. Uh, let me maybe go back to the case of the surface. So, 
So there you have a vector space. And this vector space has a functional. This vector space has a flat connection over the moduli of curves. So in some sense, it's uniquely determined by the topological type. Or as Maxim mentioned, that there is a chiral anomaly. It, it's usually projectively flat, which I'm ignoring. Uh, but this, uh, this functional is not a flat functional. So um, this, this functional is not preserved by the connection. It's still a holomorphic map. Um, it's compatible with homomorphic structure, but it's not compatible with flat structure. So uh, on the circle, this exactly means that it's compatible with the actual automorphism of the function disk, but it's not compatible with Sugawara data. Okay, so now look, it's, it's, it sounds a little bit abstract. Let me concentrate on Chern-Simons and just give two examples in, in the case of Chern-Simons. That's why, in particular, this factorization algebra that you construct in fact is not it's not a topological uh, yes because of this failure. Yes, it's just a CFT. Yes. Uh, you, you can also try to, in, in, the, in a similar language, you can try to find topological. You can ask which chiral boundary conditions are topological. <coughs> These are those where this map is flat, or this, this lax factorization function is coherent with respect to this data. But uh, again, I'm ignoring this part of the data for now. So, so sorry, even when you start with something like the modular category to a quantum group, you still, in this way, construct something that's conformal? Exactly. Not, not uh, quantum interesting. So, so l again, l let me let me give an example. Okay, so, so as I said, Chern Simons is determined by a ribbon category representations of a loop group. So you have the factorization category. of representations to the loop group. Um, maybe let me just say, um, let me not say that. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll say it instead of something else. Okay, so, so this is my 3D TFT. Um, you can think about this as a ribbon category via fusion or an easier algebraic way, is just think about this as a factorization category. Okay, now let me describe uh, some chiral boundary conditions to turn Simons. I'm going to begin with the chiral WZW, and then uh, I'll say one more boundary condition. So I'm, I want to define the lax factorization functor on the representations of the loop group. This function is just a forgetful function. You have a representation of a loop group, you have a vector space on which it acts, you forget it down to vector spaces. No, it's, it, it's lax. Uh, it, let, 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 let me just say what happens on, on the, for the unit. Um, so so let's, let, let's look, look at this category. So the unit. in representation of the loop group. Um, so the, the, the unit is given by the vacuum module uh, at level k. And so its image is going to be the vector space underlying the vacuum module and if you're familiar with the Carl W, this is exactly the factorization algebra for Carl W. 
It's just the prioritization algebra structure on the vacuum module. So notice that the same category can be described in terms of the quantum group. Uh, it's a purely topological description, but the Fakirtel functor from representations of the loop group to vect doesn't have any reasonable description in terms of the quantum group, just because the underlying representation is totally different. You can write any finite fusion category as modules for a quasi hopped algebra, I guess that's related at all. Yeah, but, but th this, I, I don't think this functor will have any finiteness. Just because you, in the vector space you get are infinite dimensional. Okay, in the, the next example, uh, I'm going to start again with Chern Simons theory, and I'm going to give a different chiral boundary condition. So this chiral boundary condition is called chiral total theory. Uh, so this is a, also a 2D CFT living on a boundary of Chern Simons. And this corresponds to a lax factorization functor from the same category. Uh, this functor is what's known as Dirichlet Sokolov reduction. I'll just denote it by ds. And roughly speaking, um, you have representation of the loop group. You're restricted to uh, representation of the loops of the nil potent. So n is the nilpotent subalgebra. And then you take um, cohomology, because this is um, topological, the algebra you get, you take some infinite cohomology. Okay, so the underlying fractionization algebra is going to be um, semi uniform cohomology of loops of nilpotent applied to the vacuum module. This is known as the W algebra. Is K integer here or not necessarily? K. Yes, so um, you can talk about a version of this uh, where you replace the uh, integral uh, representation of the loop group, which is a modular tensor category, by something which is not modular. And this is the so-called cartesian lucy category, in which case k can be arbitrary. And then, indeed, you can talk about uh, arbitrary level. Hey, Pavel, can you, in, could you imagine computing the space of lax? Factorization functors, or this, you know, the Hom space between rep KLG and Vect as factorization categories. Not, not really. On, so on the classical level, you have some, maybe one shift the symplectic space, and you want to describe the space of all possible Lagrangians. I, I don't think that's possible to do. There, there's some class of Lagrangians. Um. Uh, can I ask a question about these examples? Yeah. So because these two factorization categories were kind of like simply built. Is it true that really this functor is fixed by the functor in the fiber and it automatically inherits the factorization structure just from these categories being somehow like trivial? Or is there extra data in equipping the forgetful functor just between the, between the categories? Is there extra data to enhancing that to a factorization? Uh, yeah, you're asking how easy it is to enhance this? So I, th I think enhancing this to a lax factorization functor sh should be more or less automatic. Okay. Again, once, once you write down the definition of this as a factorization category, right. 
you should be able to also write the lux fluctuation counter. And again, for the for the claim about the Drifo Sokolov reduction, it's more or less in some paper of Sam Raskin. Sorry, which claim about the, the uh, that you have a lux factorization functor? Oh yeah, well, yeah. <coughs> this is also the metric actually. So. Yes. Okay. I mean, basically, any time you can do something which doesn't require a choice of coordinate on a curve on a disk, that, yeah. that, that will be the position. Okay. So now I want to say a few words about um, what chiral differential operators are and what, what's the, what the chiral Durham complex is. And then in the last five minutes, I'll say something about the current signal model, which is the generalization of the two. Okay, so let's fix some, um, some complex manifold. Uh, you can talk about its algebraic loop space. So you should think about um, x a power series t or maps from the disk into x. You have the full, uh, so this is the arc space. You have the full algebraic loop space. Maps from the puncture disk. And then you have the formal algebraic loop space. So this is the formal completion of uh, the algebraic loop space along the arc space. Okay. So for me, x will be some smooth variety, so it's finite dimensional. So x is finite dimensional, but uh, this formal loop space is something infinite dimensional. So to talk about the objects, uh, I'm going to say you have to do a lot of work, but it's possible to do. So Caprano Basaro um, defined the notion of a D module on a space like this, so on a certain class of independent dimensional varieties. So they defined a factorization category. And again, whenever I talk about, about factorization category, the, what it's factorization on, it's going to be irrelevant. So there is some curve in the background. It has nothing to do with x. So they defined the factorization category uh, of d modules on this formal loop space. So just think about vector bonds with a flat connection. Okay, and then the Carl drum complex has the following description. So you have the inclusion of the arc space into the formal loop space. So the Carl drum complex of X is the drum cohomology um, over this formal loop space of distributions supported on the arc space. Okay. And just because everything here is about punctured disks and it can be made factorization on a curve, this is going to be a factorization algebra. Okay, so next let me say a word about CDOs. A similar description of CDOs. This way, at least if you assume that X is a, is, a, is a schema, not a stack, then, then uh, 
why can't you just write it as a, why is it, is it enough to work with L naught? Why, what do you need LF? Um, there is some renormalization that happens when you do this push forward. Uh, and I don't think it is just any kind of uh, drum homology on L naught X. But th th this presentation will be convenient when I uh, think of them as Carl boundary conditions. So I want to give a uniform uh, presentation of both the Carl drum complex and CDOs. Okay. Um, so um, now let me fix the trivialization of the second turn class. Uh, then the algebra of Carl differential operators, it has a very similar description. Uh, so, so that's what David asked. Uh, you think about, for instance, the low complex uh, computing this cohomology, and you fix a uh, primitive for that. Um, so in this case, you just, instead of taking the wrong cohomology, you, you just take coherent cohomology on the algebraic loop space of the same object. And again, this is going to be a factorization algebra. So the, the choice of the trivialization of the second term character uh, enters in interpreting D modules as some version of quasi-coherent sheaves on the algebraic loop space so that you can actually take coherent cohomology. In general, you cannot take coherent cohomology of some D module. Okay. All right, so, th so the upshot of this is that uh, you have a frustration category. Uh, you have one lux factorization functor, which is the drum cohomology. And you have another lux factorization functor, which is coherent cohomology. So this factorization category has a unit object, and the unit object is the push forward, uh, so it's distributions on the arc space. So this exactly fits into the formulas I mentioned before. You have a 3D TFT. This is a, a somewhat silly 3D TFT, and then it has two Carl boundary conditions, um, which produces Carl drum complex or Carl differential operators. So for this boundary condition, as I said, you need to choose trivialization of the second term character. Yes, uh, it will have a name um, uh, soon. Is it, is it okay if I take five more minutes? So, yeah, five minutes is fine. Okay, yeah. Okay, so the name will appear in the next three minutes. Pardon me? You really mean back to not DG back to? Uh, yes, so you, you, you can do you can do non DG vect um, at least uh, in the second example. Yeah, I, I'm not. I have to think about this. Okay, 
So let, let me now uh, briefly state the generalization. Okay, so I'm not going to say what a Quran sigma model is. Uh, let me briefly say what the data is for the Quran sigma model. It's what's known as a Quran algebraid. Twisted current algebraoid. Um, again, I'm not going to say the axioms of for twisted current algebraoid, but you have a pairing you have a bracket you have an anchor map and you have a four form and they satisfy some axioms. Okay, and this data is equivalent to the data of a DG Lie algebra. Which is concentrated in two, uh, in two degrees with the map being the dual of the anchor map. So this is degree zero, this is degree minus one. Um, yeah, so this is um, in a joint work with him. And equipped with a two-shifted symplectic structure. I'm not going to say what this means. But if, if like this two shift and blocktech structure reflects the pairing. Okay, so the upshot, uh, so the conclusion the Quran segment model is described by a factorization category, which is sim very similar to turn Simons. So the definition of L shouldn't be E or E dual? Uh, because you have a, a pairing on E, you turn E into E dual, E dual into E. Um, so you have a factorization category, which is representations um, with a cer certain uh, central extension of the Lie algebra L, but not on X, but on its formal algebraic loop space. So if you think about L just being over a point, so you have a Lie algebra, this is going to be a representation of the loop algebra with some central extension. So if um, Let's say fixing a trivialization of K plus the second turn character you have a certain uh, boundary condition And having another, uh, anom so this is kind of an anomaly con uh, constellation condition. In, and then there, there's another CDR type boundary condition, assuming some other anomaly constellation. And let me just finish by saying that this Quran sigma model reduces uh, to Chern Simons when x is a point. Then you just look at the Lie algebra with a pairing. The CDO boundary condition corresponds to the Carroll Doubles W model. And then uh, for any x, th there is a notion of a standard uh, current algebra. In this case, the CDO type boundary condition for the for this current sig model with respect to the standard uh, current algebra is going to be CDO, and then the other cover boundary condition corresponds to the CDR. Okay, and I'll stop here. Thanks. Thank you. Questions.
So in Phil's talk, he explained to us this um, story about um, boundary conditions in terms of Lagrangian correspondence. It's, um, in the sort of appropriately like chiral case of the right dimension, and possibly if you have some monthly cancellation condition, can you take his data and produce your sort of data? Yeah, you can also describe both boundary conditions on the classical level. It does mean, yeah. yeah. And when you do that, you get this sort of Lagrangian. Yes, yeah, so, so the Lagrangian type data uh, corresponds to a slightly different anomaly cancellation because there, there is actually an h bar in here. Um, so um, in the classical level, you just need to trivialize k. Which corresponds to a notional Courant uh, algebra rather than twist the Courant algebra. Can I ask the um, question about the dynamically Baxter equation using this uh, formalism? Like uh, you, you told me before that there's some, also some lax uh, transformation. I, I'm not sure how this fits into into this story.